Hello everyone. Welcome back to X Machines channel. After 30 or 40 years traveling, the ships became rotten and out of date, unable to be repaired or refitted. In the end, where is the last birth of these million dollar vessels? In the video today, X Machines will let you explore the process of dismantling these ships, and revealing the future path of their pieces. On this final journey, the ship will be guided to the shipping yard and stay steadily. The engine is shut down and the anchor is dropped to keep the ship stable. After inspecting the whole vessel, the shipbreakers draft a plan and start to work. First of all, fuel tanks are drained. People quickly start dismantling the ship. From outside to inside, superstructure is dismantled and engine inside is disassembled. All the process is carried out until the ship is only an empty body. The deck, chimney, cockpit and pipes are all removed. The ships are broken apart into big different parts and carried inland before any steps are taken. After the initial scrapping process is completed, the complex machinery system underneath will be exposed. Before disassembling each part in the engine compartment, engineers need to calculate to make full use of the remaining usable parts and avoid causing fire and explosion accidents. Surprisingly, there are not any standard guidelines on how to dismantle a ship. Engineers only plan the process based on many years of experience working on ship demolition projects. However, safety should be a top priority in this job. Spare parts of engine rooms such as turbine, reducer, gear, etc. are cut into parts and carried inland by crane. Some of them are disposed, some are reused for building new ships or become raw materials for heavy industry. After all the engine compartment components were removed from the ship, they filled the cabin with water to clean it. After that, a complex calculation procedure is introduced. Because at this stage, the entire rest of the ship will be towed inland. If it is necessary to cut some parts of the ship to make it more compact, the engineers will carry out. A large tonnage crane will be mobilized to bring the ship to the inland disposal site. Excavators were further used to separate the rest of the ship into smaller pieces. The dismantling work of engineers on the dock is almost completed. The next job the onshore workers will take over.
At the site, hundred laborers are waiting for the vessel's parts. They are divided into some group that handle different parts. The workers here work mainly by hand with the help of rudimentary equipment such as ropes or fire cutters. When the heavy parts of the ship compartment collapse, accidents are inevitable. In these workshops, workers collect usable items such as electrics, furniture, and electrical wires. They clean, classify and transport them to second-hand markets or any traders in need. Steel plate is handled more complicatedly. The workers use gas cutter to cut the ship into pieces and pull them down with ropes. These people working at height without safety belts are trading their lives for daily bread. Heavy pieces from the wreck of the dead ship were pulled up to the gathering place by the winch and crane supported by human power. Based on the size and thickness, steel plate is divided in different places. It is said that leaving dead ships at sea is killing the marine environment. But the cost savings in disposing dead ship on shore are slowly killing human when they have to work in smoky, unsafe environments and lack proper training. Tools like metal blades and gas cylinders are delivered to the construction site by truck. Loaders are responsible for unloading and transporting them to the site. They also have to load square steel plate on the trucks to transport them to factory. These metal cases are all purchased by factory directly or brokers indirectly. The ship breaking industry is creating a vibrant raw material market. The steel scraps collected after breaking a dead ship is liquefied and reused in constructing new ships. Many other industries also use the molten steel renovated. Besides, all other parts such as wooden interior, fabrics etc. are also used again for a variety of applications. Ship breaking industry started in 1838 in England, but now they are concentrated mainly in countries with cheap labor and calm sea during high tide like India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. In India, Along Ship Breaking Yard is the world's largest maritime graveyard, recycling nearly half of all ships salvaged around the world. 
Despite controversial issues about improper disposal and assortive facilities for toxic waste treatment, Along Ship Breaking Yard recycled 196 ships in 2020. The number is increasing leads to expanding of the yard's value. Since its establishment in 1983, the shipyard has acquired a total wealth of 110.6 billion US dollars, including total assets. In the world, there are some other ship breaking yards, namely Aliaga Ship Breaking Yard, Turkey, Chittagong Ship Breaking Yard, Bangladesh, and Ghadani Ship Breaking Yard, Pakistan. Shipbreaking became an important part of the economic development of these countries. It becomes an effective alternative for the mining industry. Instead of huge sums of money invested in mining, steel companies love to buy cheap raw material from shipbreaking yards. Steel, glass, bronze, coppers are collected, renovated in workshops, and reused in construction sites or automotive wiring factories. In Bangladesh, the steel scrap covers 20% of the country's needs and in India it is almost 10%. Ship demolition also provides jobs and income for about 225,000 workers. It is also praised to protect the environment. It is thought that every year between 4,500 and 5,000 tons of jungles are saved by reusing the furniture like chairs or tables of dead ships. However, toxic materials such as asbestos, lead, Polychlorinated biphenyls and heavy metals along with lax industrial safety regulations leads to danger for the workers. Meanwhile, securing safety for workers required a lot of expenses that no employers want to spend properly. Furthermore, in order to have space for ship-breaking sites, mangrove forests along the beach have been destroyed that reduce ability to protect the country from storms. Protecting the environment or destroying the environment, benefit people's living or gradually destroying human health, these advantages and disadvantages of the ship-breaking industry need to be put on the scale for a fair judgment. Pending expert judgment, and because of the undeniable importance of dead ship recycling, raising working standards and protecting workers' health imperative and necessary.